Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and Steve Baker may not be a household name, especially outside of the UK, but he's been a very influential player in the campaign to push Brexit for some years. In this video, I'd like to discuss his decision to quit the ERG chairmanship and what it may indicate about the shifting position of Brexiteers like him. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So what is the ERG, first of all, for those who don't know, really quickly, it stands for European Research Group, though research and Europe has nothing to do with their work. It's a misleading misnomer in the same way as Tommy Robinson's new free speech campaign. Nothing at all to do with freedom other than the freedom to spread vile hate speech. So what the ERG really is, is a special interest group who've been trying to take the UK out of the European community for decades in order to essentially remove the state almost completely. Their membership is made up of financial pirates and they want the UK to be their treasure island. The group was chaired more recently by the rather more famous Jacob Rees-Mogg until last year when Steve Baker took over, but he has been a prominent member for many years, as I say. So his stepping down on the face of it is rather curious. It isn't just a changing of the guard. It's not like he's been doing it for a few years, swap around, get someone else to do it. Uh, you may expect that in, in organisations. Uh, this is very shortly after he took the role in the first place. He was also last year offered a place in Boris Johnson's government and turned it down, unlike Jacob Rees-Mogg. Baker felt that he wanted to be free to attack the party leadership, something you aren't allowed to do as a minister. So what is Baker's reason for leaving the post? He says that he's satisfied with Boris Johnson's vision for Brexit. He says, we've, we've left the EU now, which we haven't. We've left the membership. And he's satisfied with Boris Johnson's vision for Brexit and will allow someone else to take over the role. So do we believe it? Well, yes and no. The thing is that on a superficial glance, it could look perfectly reasonable. After all, if the only purpose of the ERG was seeing the UK give up its membership of the EU, then he could indeed feel that he has no more ambitions in that direction and of course therefore shouldn't be leading the group because, well, he doesn't see that the group needs to be doing anything for now anyway. Um, however, Boris Johnson hasn't changed his vision as such. In fact, at a time when Boris Johnson was determined to crash us out without a deal, that was when Baker was refusing to serve under Johnson. That was him saying he didn't trust the Prime Minister to proceed in a way that meant he wouldn't want to criticise. Well, Johnson has a lot more scope to vary the outcome of Brexit now than he did then. Sure, he's talking a tough line on Brexit, but it's the same line as he took last year. The difference is that there's any number of other pressures that could cause him to soften his stance on Brexit, particularly after we leave the transition period. I'm not expecting it before then. Uh, Steve Baker did cite the example that Boris Johnson now has a large majority to carry out his work. But the reason he didn't take up the ministerial post was because he wanted to be free to criticise the leadership. Now, the leadership's line isn't really varied by the majority. Boris Johnson could have still kept his tough line, even if... Parliament were boxing him in. So what's changed there? The majority doesn't change that. Now, Steve Baker wouldn't serve in Boris Johnson's government because he didn't trust him. If he did, he would have taken up the position. And then if Boris Johnson later on did something unexpected that he needed to argue against, he could always have resigned the position and then criticised. That happens quite commonly. Now, when it comes to Brexiteers, basically, I think you can lump them into two categories in this regard. There's the group that would include Boris Johnson and Michael Gove, for example. These are the people who said how great it would be to leave the EU. They campaigned for that in the referendum and they made specific promises about what it means. And crucially, they have the power to follow through on those promises. So, for example, if Boris Johnson doesn't give the NHS an extra £350 million a week in 2021, on top of his other spending pledges, then he will have directly broken a promise that he gave because he has the power to implement it. The other group would be categorised by the likes of Nigel Farage. They made all sorts of weird and wonderful promises too. They said how great it would be to leave the EU too, but they don't have the power to make good on any of them. That brings it with it a certain freedom. So when it all goes badly wrong, they can just blame someone else. After all, they weren't at the wheel. They don't control any of the levers of power. They have no influence over the process. So they, they're just a passenger. They can just say it's the driver's fault. 
So the way I see it, Baker turned down Johnson's offer last year to keep his feet firmly planted in this second camp. I, I said at the time that I thought it was curious that Jacob Rees-Mogg did take up the offer of a ministerial post because that attaches to him some responsibility for what is to come. Baker is no fool. He knows how damaging Brexit's going to be to the country, not to him, of course, but to the country. He wants to be part of the group, I would have thought, that sacrifices whichever leader is in Downing Street when it all goes tits up. So the plan originally was this. Theresa May was the leader. She was the compromise candidate. She was going to take us out of the EU. She would be drinking the poison chalice. Um, and then when the damage was done and it all went badly wrong, all the blame would be piled onto her. She would resign. In comes Boris Johnson. Now, it went a little bit wrong because Theresa May didn't play ball with them, so they had to assassinate her. In came Boris Johnson, but they've got no personal feelings towards him. They'll just sacrifice him instead. They just, they know that the lead, they know that there's going to be a great deal of blame coming the party's way when the Brexit chaos hits in 2021. They just need to be able to blame someone else. And he wants to be in the camp that doesn't cop for any of that blame. He wants to be the one pointing the finger, not having the fingers pointed at him. So do I believe his reasons? Like I say, yes and no. I believe that he genuinely thinks there's nothing more for him to do as ERG chair at the moment. So from that point of view, it could be perfectly genuine. We are no longer members of the EU. What is he going to argue for? Boris Johnson at the moment is playing through the motions of saying how mean the EU are for not giving us a trade deal, even though he hasn't set out what trade deal he wants. They're mean for not giving it us. Uh, but the idea that it's all plain sailing from here and that Johnson has it under control, you know, I believe in Boris Johnson's vision, that's definitely not in his thinking because that vision has not changed, has not wavered from Boris Johnson. I believe he's just positioned himself in the group that will point the fingers of blame at others when the chaos hits. Yes, they will first of all point at the EU. They're not going to straight away turn to their own party. But if that doesn't fall enough of the population, just blaming the EU, then he'll just bring about the downfall of the leader and install a new one to placate the masses. It's always worked in the past. So those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.